about in Nehemiah when Ezra stood up and the scribes and they read from the books. On a pole, they stood on a pole of wood. The people stood as well. And they stood for six hours. Amen? That's good stuff. How many of you think you can do it for six hours? How many of you are already going, no, 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 not into that? A few of you are in our game. Um, how many of you are excited we don't have six-hour church services? Careful now. Careful. Uh -oh. Careful. <laughs> well, we're about to have one, so. Hey. <laughs> Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. That had absolutely nothing to do with anything. Titus chapter 2, and we're going to read the first ten verses this morning. And then I want to preach on this thought, healthy Christianity. Healthy Christianity. Now before you turn me off, I know I, I'm one of those, I hear the word healthy and I'm just like, eh. That usually means they're going to talk about salads and, and exercise and eh, not a part of my life. Um, but you listen this morning, healthy Christianity. If I'm not healthy as a Christian, the rest of my life will suffer. Okay, my relationships will suffer, my finances will suffer. Uh, every part of my life uh, as a child of God, God wants to be involved in all of it. And so if I'm not a healthy Christian, what we're going to talk about today, then all of those other areas of my life will suffer. And so I want to give you some stuff here this morning. This is going to be, there is a lot in this passage. Um, and we're going to try our best to get through it, but there's just a couple of thoughts I want to give you. Uh, we could spend literally, probably weeks, going through these ten verses and talking about, spending time teaching about all of these things. We're going to kind of highlight them real quick and then give you the point of the message this morning. So let's begin reading verse number one. The Bible says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Healthy Christianity. Let's talk about it this morning. Let's pray. We'll have another song and then get into the message. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would help us this morning. First of all, God, I pray that you would uh, help me to be emptied of myself. God, we're not here to uh, try to entertain. We're not here to fill up time. God, we want to impart the Word of God. And Lord, I pray that you help us this morning. I want to say only what you want, nothing more, nothing less. And so I pray that I would just be your mouthpiece this morning. Father, I pray that you would be with uh, the listeners, God, today. I pray that you would speak to our hearts as there's much to cover, much that could be said. God, may we, may we do just what you say, just what you want. And then I pray that you'd speak to every single heart. God, I don't know what these folks need this morning, but I serve the God that does know. And I pray that you would take the message, take your word, God, and use it and apply it to our lives. May we leave truly changed, different. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Spread the 
or a lot in this passage, rather. And uh, so we're going to move as quickly as we can this morning. Uh, I want to give you a lot of things. It's going to kind of be one of those scattergun kind of messages. Obviously, by reading through this, he's talking to a lot of different people, a lot of different age groups. So we're going to hit everybody this morning. Amen? And there's one particular part in there about the ladies that I'm going to enjoy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's going to be good, isn't it? Look at that face. I gave it to her yesterday. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, true. But I think I can get to that door. If you'll hold her, I think I can get to that door before any of these other ladies get to me. Uh-oh. All right? And, uh, you're a gambler, too. Do what? <laughs> said you're a gambler, too, aren't you? I am. I just said, I know. Pray for me. Healthy Christianity. The title there comes from the first verse. He says there, verse 1, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. The word sound means this, to have sound health, to be well, to be in health, to be whole or wholesome, or to be uncorrupt. That's what the word sound means right there. Uh, this past week I have been battling a cold. I, uh, Sunday, last Sunday I wasn't feeling well. Went home with a fever. Monday didn't feel well. Woke up with earaches in both ears. And, uh, you know... You can feel sorry for me. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, anyway, just didn't feel good all week. Was just battling it, coughing, sneezing, all that good stuff that comes along with the weather change. But I still like the colder weather. Uh oh. Amen. I can deal with the cold. Amen. I'd rather it be cold and me have a cold than it be hot. Period. Amen. And snow. I'm trying to offend Miss Sheila right now. That's what it sounds like. Uh, am I offending you? Are you all right? Okay. Well, we can just pray she come get right. Oh. 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 Not even going there. Next point. I don't think she's carrying anything that'll shoot through all of that, right? Oh, no. 
sound, all right? I was not sound in health this week. I did not feel well, all right? I was, there was something in my body that was corrupt, okay? Does that make sense? So that's what the word sound is talking about. The word doctrine there means instruction, teaching, and learning. And so what it's saying is sound doctrine, or rather healthy instruction, should produce healthy Christians. Yeah. Or at the very least, it ought to make me aware, sound doctrine, healthy instruction, ought to make me aware of what a healthy Christian ought to look like. Amen. Okay? Because again, I have, I, I have a free will, you have a free will. We can read this, teach it, preach it, talk about it, and we can all look at it and make the decision, I don't want to do that. If you choose that, that's fine. But you're unhealthy. The opposite of everything that we'll talk about today, uh, we're going to talk about a healthy Christian, but the opposite is unhealthy Christians. And so the choice is yours to make. Do you want to be a healthy Christian or an unhealthy Christian? Unhealthy people die young. I'm not saying God's going to kill you, okay? But spiritually speaking, I want the fullness of God in my life. I want God's hand upon me. I need God. To, I want His provision. I want His protection. I want His blessing. I want everything that God has for me. I want to receive it. Why wouldn't I want to? You know, people say, well, that's greedy. No. Why wouldn't I want what God's got? God has my best interest at heart. Why wouldn't I want everything that He has for me? And so if I'm to get all of that, I need to be a healthy Christian. And so we're going to talk about it this morning. There's three thoughts in here. And really, I have read through this passage of Scripture numerous times uh, over the years, but I found that they weren't hidden, but I never saw them like I did this week when I was studying. And so I want to give you these three thoughts this morning on healthy Christianity, the who, the what, and the why. Number one, the who. Healthy Christianity. Who is a healthy Christian or who can be a healthy Christian? He's obviously writing to a lot of people here. Look at the first uh, verse number two. The first one says this, that the aged men, the aged men. Now, I'm going to define that for you. Aged men literally means old man. Amen. I know it's deep. I, I, you know, I'm trying to help you this morning, Kesley. Amen. Old man. That's what it means. Uh, look at verse number three. He says uh, that the aged women. I'm going to help you with that one, too. All right, you get the idea. It means the same thing. All right, uh, verse number four. That they, the old, I'm sorry, the aged women may teach the young women. You ready for that one? That means young, fresh, and new. Okay, youthful, youthful. And then there's another group there, verse number six. Young men means the same thing, youthful, fresh, New. And so we've got both ends of the spectrum there as far as age groups go. Now, here, here's the point. We're not going to spend long on the who of Christianity, but I think what God is saying is any child of God can and should be healthy. There are people out there, I have met them, we've heard them, that say, well, I'm too old to serve. And they get to a certain age and they kind of retire from their Sunday school. I, I'm 50 now, I'm not going to teach my Sunday school class anymore. I'm 60 now, I'm not going to run a bus around anymore. Listen, there's no I'm too old to serve God in the Bible. Amen. Caleb said, I'm as strong as I was the day God called us way back before we wandered 40 years in the wilderness. He said, I want that mountain. Give it to me. Amen. How old was he then? 40. Was he 80? When he said, give me that mountain? Oh, he was 80, 40 yeah. when they went in and spied. And then because all the rest of those deadbeats, they had to wander around for 40 years in the wilderness. And when he's 80, he said, look, these guys kept me from it for 40 years. I'm still as strong as I was then. Give me that mountain. Amen. We need some elderly folks. Just because, Listen, just because you're older in years doesn't mean you're excluded from serving God. Amen. Listen, young people, just because you haven't reached adult head, adulthood yet, doesn't mean you can't serve God either. Young men, young women, it's time for some young people, and that could include these young folks as well, but I want to hit these teenagers, hey, serve God now! Amen. There are too many young people going, well, I, I'm still young, I still got to sow my wild oats, I'm not smart enough, I'm not this enough, I, I'm going to wait till I'm an adult. No! Serve God now! Amen. David was a young man when he killed Goliath. That's right. Probably your age. That's right, amen. Yeah, I am going to preach. Amen. 
But then he says this. There's another, there's another group of people in there. Still talking about who. All right? The servants. Look at verse number 9. Verse number 9. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things. Not answering again. Why do servants? You say you got old, older men, old ladies. Sorry. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> aged men, aged women, young men, young women, and then you've got servants. What, what's God saying? I believe what God's saying here is, you see, servants back then and servants still today, they really don't have much status. In the Bible, they didn't have, they were, servant means slave, literally. It means slave. They, they weren't allowed to own property. They weren't allowed, they were property. They weren't allowed to own land. They didn't have anything. They couldn't, if there was voting and things like that, they couldn't do anything. They, they didn't have the social standing of someone else. And so servants were just, they were kind of worthless other than getting work out of them. But they can still be a healthy Christian. Yeah, amen. You read the rest of that. God's plan for the world, obviously, is that the lost would be saved. And He says there that the servants can help their owners or their leaders or their bosses or however you want to, uh, want, to, want to say it, they can help those people in authority over them to get saved just by their healthy Christianity. Amen. And so anybody can be a healthy Christian. There are no exclusions. What's the point? The point is you need to serve God regardless of where you're at in life. Age doesn't matter. I almost said size doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't, but... Fat, skinny, doesn't matter. Amen? Hallelujah for that. I can button this jacket. Hey, anybody can serve God. There's too many... Uh oh I heard that. He didn't button it. There. Got it. And it's not about to pop off and kill anybody. I heard... Brother, I've listened to a lot of Kenny Baldwin this week, and he, he was preaching, and he said uh, he broke a button. And then he started talking. He said, you're not, you're not a preacher if you don't break buttons while you preach. So if I have to, I'm just going to pull one off. <laughs> Broke it. Anyway, it does not matter where you're at in life, whether you have uh, money, rich, poor. None of that matters. There are too many Christians, so-called Christians, that we come up with excuses on why I cannot serve God. Right there covers it all. Amen. Old, young, servants... Anybody in between, everybody can, and God expects us to serve Him. You know how I know that? You're sitting here. Amen. God did not leave you here to fulfill your dreams and to fulfill your goals. We talked about it in Sunday school. God left us here for a purpose. And so if you're living and breathing today, you are here for Him, not for you. And so God has a purpose for you. The who, it's talking about everybody. Every saved, born-again believer. Listen, if you're here this morning and you're not saved, you can get that taken care of. Yeah. There's a big difference. We talk to people often when we're knocking doors. People say, oh, I believe in God. There's a big difference between believing in God and having a relationship with God. Right. I know a lot about a lot of people. I know a lot about the president. I know a lot about Michael Jordan. I know a lot about a lot of these athletes. I know a lot about a lot of people, but I don't know them. That's right. I don't know the president. I don't know Michael Jordan as much as I'd like to. He ever shows up to town, I'd be like, hey man, I saw all your games. Remember me? <laughs> I read all of that, all the articles about you in the newspaper. Doesn't that ring a bell? <laughs> but that's how a lot of people act about God. Yeah. A lot of people in the world, they go, oh, I know a lot about Him. But Jesus said they'll stand before Him someday and they'll go, Lord, Lord, did we not do many wonderful works in your name? Did we not prophesy? Did we not do these? And He'll look at them and go, I never knew you. Depart from me. Listen, if you don't have a relationship with Him this morning, that is where you need to start. Amen. You need the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's not about what you do or don't do. It's not about how good you are or how bad you are. It's about how wonderful He is and what He's done for us. No one will get to heaven on their own merits. That's right, amen. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as I'm too old or I'm not old enough yet to serve God. Anybody can serve God. That's the who. So it's talking to all of us this morning. Let's look at the what. What is a healthy Christian? What are the qualities that make up a healthy Christian? We're going to go through them group by group, and we're going to hurry. Okay? Because this isn't the point of the message. 
And I really want to get to the end. So I'm going to help you. We're going to define some of these things as we go through them. If you're taking notes, good luck. Verse number two. What are the qualities of a healthy Christian? What does a healthy Christian look like? Aged men. Look at it. It says, first of all, that the aged men be sober. That they be grave. That they be temperate. That they be sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. What do those things mean? Sober means vigilant and circumspect. Vigilant. Aware of their surroundings. We see people walking around here. Uh, sometimes they're, they're high. They're, they're, they're out of their mind on drugs and alcohol. And they are not walking sober. They are not walking circumspect. They are not vigilant of their surroundings. This is when I walk around this neighborhood. I know where everybody's at within eyesight. I mean, I can see them. Yeah. I step out on my porch and I'm looking. Okay, there's three guys over here. There's three guys over here. Because I want to be aware. If something crazy should happen, I want to know who killed me. <laughs> Say why? So I can tell God He did it. <laughs> Get that one. Hey, vigilant. Peter said, uh, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour." As Christians, this isn't just for the old men. This is for every child of God. We ought to be sober. Listen, life is not a game, fellas. That's right, amen. It's not a game. Girls, life is not a game. Life is serious. God left us here to do a job, and we better be vigilant because the devil wants to destroy us. Yes, amen. The devil wants to stop our church. We're, we're teaching to the young people in Sunday school, hook, line, and sinker. I like to fish. I enjoy fishing. You know what fishing is? Just trying to outsmart a fish, get him on the hook. Whether I'm using live bait or fake bait, all I'm trying to do is trick that thing to get on my line. That is exactly what the devil is doing with every one of us. Amen. Your temptation may not be my temptation, but he's trying to ruin you and he's trying to ruin me. So he's just trying to get you on the hook. Amen. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's trying to attract your attention. That's why we need to be sober, vigilant, circumspect. The word grave, next one, means this. It means to be honest and honorable. Listen, I said a minute ago, we could spend a lot of time on all these, but we live in a very dishonest world. Right. We live in a world that today, there's no such thing as honor anymore. I didn't grow up in this time, but there are people in here who you used to be able to go to the bank and say, I need a loan, and they would give it to you on a handshake. Now you've got to have 14 forms of identification and 17 references and all this kind of stuff before they loan. Why? Because people are cheaters. Yeah. They're dishonest. Yeah. That ought not be so among God's people. Amen. Listen. Christian, you ought to be the hardest worker on the job. Amen. Don't you be with everybody else when they're hiding out, when they're hiding in the bathroom, when they're hiding out behind around the corner talking and laughing and watching YouTube videos, and then the boss comes around and, oh, we're busy, we're working, we're doing our job, and the boss leaves you back to whatever. Hey, listen, don't be that one. Amen. Don't be that one. Because we go in and say we're Christians, it's poor testimony. That gives God a bad name. Yeah. Grave, honest, honorable. The word temperate there, let's move on, means self-controlled. It means moderation. There's a good one for Thanksgiving. I'm not going there because I'm... It's easier to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission. How many of you are planning on sinning on Thanksgiving? <laughs> Wicked! <laughs> that, that's what temperate means. Self-controlled. When that pumpkin pie comes by a second time. See, I got plenty of self control with pumpkin pie. Pecan pie. Yeah, you can have it. I mean, they're okay. But if you bring me a brownie, especially with peanut butter frosting. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, listen, Miss Judy. Until you've had it, yeah, come don't, on. don't knock it till yeah, you've tried on, it. Yeah. I'm telling you, chocolate and peanut butter go together yeah, yeah. just yeah. like Adam and Eve. Uh oh. Self control, temperate, sound in faith. Let's hurry. Sound in I'm starving. I got good ears, too. Sound in faith. That means healthy in persuasion and moral conviction. Sound in healthy reliance upon Christ and constancy. Here's what that's saying. 
These aged men better know what they believe. There's a whole lot of Christians running around who say who've been saved for decades and have no idea what they believe. Yeah. Listen, That's... just because you're saved and on your way to heaven, you better get in that book. Amen. You better find out why you believe what you believe. Don't just take the preacher's word for it. Thank God we've got a pastor here at Liberty Baptist Church who preaches the truth straight. But you better get you a Bible and study it. Amen. That verse that says, Study to show thyself approved unto God is not written to the pastor. It's written to the church. Amen. Amen. That means you study, you study, you study, you study, you study, you study. If you need to learn how to read, learn how to read so you can study. Amen. That's for everybody. Sound in faith. Sound in charity. That means healthy. Again, the word sound means healthy. In love, affection, and benevolence. Healthy in love, affection, and but I just cannot stand that person. That's unhealthy. If there's anybody that you feel like that about, you're unhealthy. Amen. Because a healthy Christian is sound in their charity, right. love, and affection. You say, well, I'm, that's not my personality. I don't see anything in there about personality. Jesus said a new commandment, give I unto thee that ye love one another. What did God say? What did Jesus tell the rich young ruler were the two greatest commandments? Love God, love people. That's it. If, you're, if you can't love folks, you are unhealthy. Let's move on. Sound in patience. Uh-oh. Next one. Patience. This one's tough for me. I am not a patient per, per Whatever. I'm not a patient people. That's why when I'm driving, I have to be in front. I don't mean in the front seat. I mean in front of you. I have to be the winner. We, again... All my illustrations there are going to be Brother Baldwin's illustrations because I listened to a lot of him this week. Anyway, he said, when I'm driving, i got to win. I am not of the persuasion that everybody gets a participation trophy. There are no winners and losers. <laughs> there are winners and there are losers. And I don't like being a loser. And so I, can't, I, I cannot drive behind a school bus. I cannot drive behind a big truck that I, cannot, I need to see. What's going on up there? In case somebody needs to get run over, I mean, in case I need to avoid something, I need to see what's up there. I gotta be in front. If somebody says, "Follow me to where we're going," I'm like, uh, -uh. Google, where are we? Gonna? I'm gonna beat you there. I gotta win. That's what. That's who I listen. I am all about winning. Sound and patient. I am not a patient person. But God says often, wait. How many of you are good waiters? And I don't mean servers at a restaurant. You're patient? Amen. I'm not. I'm not. That means I'm unhealthy. If it is, I need it now. I need it right away. Lord, you're taking too long. Hurry up, dude. I'm, whatever it is, if I'm impatient, if you're impatient, that is unhealthy. It's unhealthy. I tried to tell the Lord a long time ago, God, don't teach me patience. It's not going to work. Patience is a virtue. Why can't hurry up be a virtue? <laughs> Please! <laughs> anyway, aged men, aged women. We're talking about the qualities. Let's move on. Aged women, verse number three. He says, uh, he says that the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Behavior there means their position or their demeanor. How you live, how you act. And so this is to the lady, but again, I know he's talking to specific groups, but the application is there for all of us. All of these qualities should be a part of our lives. All right, he says behavior becomes holiness. That means reverent, sacred, proper, right. Listen, are we sacred? Are we proper in every situation of our life? Listen, when you guys get alone and uh, it's just the, the teenage boys, what do you guys talk about? What do you laugh about? Girls, what are you talking about when it's just you in school and your friends? Hey, adults, that's not just for teenagers either. Everybody at work, those lost folks start talking about things they shouldn't talk about. What do you do? Proper in every situation. I ain't got time to preach on all this stuff, but we're moving on. Holiness, not false accusers. Uh oh 
Who has a Strong's Concordance at home or you can get an app on your device? Okay. You, you check me if I'm lying. False accusers literally means, look it up in the Strong's Concordance, in the Greek, it means Satan. Sorry, ladies, that's to you. You didn't call me Satan. Um, you see, I'm moving closer to the door. False accusers. No, that's literally what it means. It means Satan specifically. It's I wrote it down just like specifically Satan, devil, slanderer. You know what the devil is? He's the accuser of the brethren. That's right. He's a liar, the father of lies. Listen, Christians, we ought to be honest. Yeah. Amen. We ought to be honest in every situation, even if that gets you in trouble. Even if being honest puts the heat on you. We've all been backed into corners at times and at the last minute we're like, eh, and out comes a lie. But that doesn't make it right. Honest. Not false accusers. Not given... Sorry, ladies. Here we go again. Not given to much wine. It's funny that... I just think it's funny that he called you Satan and then told you not to get drunk. He didn't say anything to the men about wine. Oh. Guys, don't get drunk. It's to everybody. Not given to much wine. Given to means not enslaved or ensnared or in bondage to. And then wine obviously means intoxicating beverage. Listen, that, you see, that's very practical. That is very practical. Not given to, not ensnared, not enslaved. People say, oh, it takes 10 beers to get drunk. Then if you drink one, you are 10% intoxicated. That says not any. 1%, 2%, 10%, 100%. Doesn't matter. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. All right? I don't think we got any drinkers in here. But anyway, that's what the Bible says. Then it says teachers of good things. That simply means teachers of good things. Teachers of right. Teachers of right. The elderly women are to be teachers of right. Moving on, the young women. It says they're to be sober. We already covered sober. To teach them. The older women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands. You know, it's funny. God commands the husbands to love their wives. He never commands the ladies to do so. He does tell the older women to teach the younger women to, to love them. They're to be taught. I'm just tell you what the Bible says. To love their husbands. That means to be fond of or affectionate to their husbands. It means friendly. Ladies? Amen. I'm just telling you what it says. Be friendly to your husband. You married him. <laughs> We're going somewhere. Next, to love their children. That means to be fond of one's kids. All you got to do is go to the grocery store and you can see all kinds of parents that are not real fond of their children. That's it, yeah. There are some people that do not need to have kids. But listen, if you have them, you ought to be fond of them. Children are in heritage of the Lord. Say they irritate me, then you change. You, listen. David, I saw you look at your mom. I'll come preach to you in a minute. Right now, I'm going to preach to Asia. You know why your, your kids are the way they are? Uh oh. Because you made them that way. Careful. I'm about to rip your face off in a minute. Don't get too excited, young people. To be discreet, next. To be discreet, that means to be safe in mind, self-controlled, moderate in opinion, and passion. Ladies, are you discreet? Chaste, that means clean, innocent, modest, pure. I know he's writing this to the ladies, but again, the principle applies to all of us. Are we clean? Are we innocent? Are we, listen, modest. That's what that word chase means, modest, pure. 
Are you modest? I'm talking to everybody. Modest, pure, clean, innocent in every... There's no innocence in, in people today. The stuff we watch on TV and think is funny. Where's the blush at sin? I mean, we hear, we hear foul language and it doesn't even bother us anymore. We sit down and watch a movie and stuff doesn't even phase us. Why? We've become immune to it. Listen, as children of God, as saved people, that stuff ought to have no place in our life. That ought to bother us. It irritates me when I walk through the store or down the street and I hear somebody use a foul word. It irritates me. It, it angers me when I hear somebody say GD. But yet we'll sit at home and watch that stuff and let them say it and we think nothing about it. What is wrong with us? I said it in Sunday school. We don't think. We're just not thinkers. You know what we are? We just want to be entertained. That's the generation we live in. Just entertain me. So many people come to church just to be entertained. Yeah. Well, that special was good. That special wasn't good. That was a good message. Boy, he laid an egg today. You know what you're looking for? Entertainment. Can I tell you this? We're not here to entertain you. Amen. That's not what church is for. Moving on, keepers at home. That means to guard. It means to be a stayer at home. I'm just defining these. This means domestically inclined to be a good housekeeper. Look it up. Strong skin cordons. I'm just telling you what it means. Good. That means beautiful, valuable, virtuous. Obedient to their own husbands. That means to be submissive or to place... Listen. Listen to the word. To place under. To place... That's a decision. You have to decide... I'm going to put myself under the authority of another. Ladies to husbands, all Christians to God, your pastor, any other authority in your life. It's a choice. I am choosing to submit. It's an attitude. So let me ask you, how are we doing? Are we healthy today or are we unhealthy? If any of us are struggling with these things. Listen, Christianity is not some idea that cannot be uh, grasped. If I can say the way, Christianity is very practical. Love your wives, love your kids, be good housekeepers, be honest, don't be a liar. We're fixing to get to the kids. Young men. Should I come down here? Young men. Dominic, should I do that? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Young men, be sober minded. Sober-minded. We already know what sober means. Vigilant, circumspect. Here it means, the word together, sober-minded, means to be sane. We spend a lot of time on that. We live in a crazy world. To be sane, to be moderate, to be in right mind. Listen, you say, what, what's the application there? The world thinks that we are abnormal. That's right. <clears throat> they think we are crazy. You know what is right in this world? You know what is normal, regardless of what society says? This That's right, amen. is what defines normal for me. Not Facebook. Not social media. Not CNN, Fox News. Not the president. Nothing outside these two black covers defines normal for me. Everything is right here. Amen. And so the world may think we're crazy, but according to the Bible, we're normal. If I don't live according to this, I'm not in my right mind. Guys, if you're not talking, walking, thinking, girls, everybody else, if you're not thinking like this book, you're not in your right mind. That's right. You're not sober-minded. To be serious, life is not a game. We said it already. Sober-minded. <clears throat> In all things, there. look at it, verse number 6, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, verse 7, in all things, that means everything, the whole, in all things, showing thyself a pattern. The word pattern means this, a statue or a model, a resemblance, a pattern of good works. Good works. Now everybody, this is talking to young men, but everybody, think about it this morning. What do you think 
people are saying about you. Oh, that person loves God. Oh, that person's got a filthy mouth. Oh, that person's got a dirty mind. I texted the boys yesterday, I think it was, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever you let in right here and right here will come out here or in your actions. And Brother Weedo says it, garbage in, garbage Don't judge me. Don't go there. That verse is often quoted out of context. That's right. God expects Christians. He said, you shall know them by their fruit. Yeah. So what kind of fruit are you growing? What do you look like? Not what do you want to look like. What do you look like to other people? In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Good means beautiful. Acts, works means your actions and your toil. And just defining these things so we get an understanding of it. He said, in all things, be an example of good works. Be a pattern of good works. You know who's watching you for? All those boys sitting upstairs. That's right. Amen. Dale, Dylan, Nassim, you guys are the coolest people in this building to them. Are you a pattern? You know who these guys are watching? Me. Amen. Carlos, Alex, Mike. Andrew, Chris, what are we showing them? We come to church all dressed up, everything's good, we love God. But then outside this place, we're something different. In all things. You know who I'm watching? Hayward. <laughs> He's older than me. You know who I'm watching? Brother Dale. Some of the older men here. Elsewhere, Brother Cordell. Listen, everybody in here is a teacher whether you choose to be or not. Somebody is watching you. What are you modeling? What are you showing them as a pattern to live after? Then he goes on and says, look, verse number 7, showing a pattern of good works in doctrine. That we already know that means instruction, teaching, and learning. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. That means purity. Hey, Teenagers, are you pure in word, in thought, in deed? Hey, everybody, what do you do on social media? You don't, you don't let certain people friend you on Facebook because you don't want them to see the pictures you're putting up? <coughs> oh, you're meddling. Okay, I'll move on. Purity. Everywhere in life. Gravity. We're going to talk about it. honesty, honorable, having strong... Moral principles. Sincerity means genuine incorruptibility. In, listen, incorruptibility, that means not having the ability to be corrupted. You know how you guys keep from being corrupted? You hang out with this book a lot. Amen. You hang out with people who hang out with this book a lot. We've been going through Psalm 101. I taught it last week in, in Sunday school. My family and I have been doing family devotions. You know what David's saying? Go on and read Psalm 101. Eight verses. You know what he's saying in just about every single verse? He's making decisions on how to stay incorruptible. He's making decisions on how I'm going to stay right with God. He says, I will not have a froward heart. I will not have a distorted heart. Well, how do you not have a distorted heart? You don't hang around distorted people. You don't watch distorted television. You don't listen to distorted music. As I said, Christianity is very practical. Sound speech. Sound speech. That means, what's the word sound mean? Healthy. Healthy discourse. Healthy reasoning. Healthy talk. Hey, listen. I'm, and I've said it before, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I'm always... Not always, but I often bust these kids for some of the slang things they say. Not saying that what they're saying is bad and vulgar, but I don't want to sound like the world. That's what that's talking about, guys. Sound Amen. speech. Healthy speech. If the way you talk sounds like the way they talk out there, it's unhealthy. Amen. And that's not just for these guys. That's for all of us. Amen. Then it says that cannot be condemned. 
in the verse number uh, verse number eight. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That means blameless. The word condemned or cannot be condemned means to be blameless. That's the what of Christianity. And we're almost done. Spent more time there than I wanted to. Talked about the who. Everybody is to be a healthy Christian. What does a healthy Christian look like? It's very practical. I mean, think about it. We just talked about what we say, what we think about, who we hang around. Christianity is not an idea. It's very, very tangible. But why? Why should we be healthy Christians? I said at the beginning, it's not about us. Look at verse verse number 5. Talking about the aged men and the aged women, teaching the young women. Why should we be those things? The end of verse number 5, that the Word of God be not blasphemed. You want to know why we're supposed to be a healthy Christian? You want to know why these qualities are supposed to be a part of my life? So that the Word of God is not blasphemed. God said it in the book of Psalms 138, verse number 2. He said, I've magnified my Word above my name. There's a lot of people in the world today, they don't want anything to do with that Bible because a lot of Christians have sullied it. They've dirtied it. They've made it look like it's not real. It's not genuine. It's not sincere. Well, how do we make that? How do we make the Bible look that way? When I live a life that is not genuine and not sincere. You know what it means? Don't be a hypocrite. Amen. That takes care of everybody. Because we're all hypocrites. Amen. We can dress up. We can sit up. We can look good, look sharp. But if I'm not a healthy Christian, I'm making this look bad. That's exactly what it means. The word blasphemed means to vilify or to defame or to revile or to speak evil of. Often, often in the Old Testament, Things were done and God would say, don't do that, it makes me look bad. A prophet would say, you've given the enemy cause to blaspheme him because of your words, your actions, your deeds. Think about this. I'll say that in a minute. That the Word of God be not blasphemed. Look at verse number 8. Why else? What's the purpose of living a healthy life? Verse number 8. Sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. You know what the word contrary means? It means the opposite of. He that is the opposite may be ashamed. In Peter it says that the wife can lead her lost husband to the Lord by her chaste conversation. Not her words. Her lifestyle. People ought to be seeing something different in me and it ought to convict them and bring them to shame. That's what that word means. They say of Charles Finney, he was an old-time preacher, old-time evangelist. He would go, he'd hold revivals all over America. He held one in New York and he'd walk through factories. And without even saying a word, people knew the touch of God was on him and people would hit their knees praying and begin to get saved and begin to get right with God just by Him walking through the building. Is there anybody in this room today, myself included, that has the touch of God on them so much that when you walk into a room, people go, whoa. Or, the people go, hey, let's tell him this story. He'll like it. I know he goes to church, but he'll think this is funny. So this is tough. I know. Me too. Look at the last one, verse number 10. Kind of culminates it all. Verse number 10, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity. Why? That they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. You know what the word adorn means? It means to decorate, garnish, and trim. We're all about to do something like that. We're all about to decorate Christmas trees, decorate our homes, garnish, trim. We're, we're about to do what we understand what that means. 
He says in the end of that verse that your life, your words, your actions, being a healthy Christian, adorns, garnishes, trims, decorates the doctrine of God. You know what that means? You make God look good or you make Him look bad. There it is in a nutshell. The whole message. A healthy Christian makes God look good. An unhealthy Christian makes God look bad. So are you healthy today? Or are you unhealthy? I want God to look great to this group right here. Amen. I want God to look great to my other two. One, Brooklyn up there, Jason up there. I gotta quit making God look bad. Ah. We're done. I'm a complainer by nature. You know what that does? Makes him look bad. Oh, my life is so bad. I got no money to do this. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm a... And all that says to these guys is, well, I don't want to be a Christian. It's not worth it. Look at him. He's miserable. Why would I want to serve God? Why would I want to live my life for God? He's miserable. Why would I want what you got, Amanda? You look miserable all the time. Frank, why would I want your God? Why would I want to go to your church? All you do is complain about the people over there. Why would I want to come visit your place? All you do is talk about how dumb everybody is and how, how annoying people are. You talk about the preacher and how you don't like how he preaches messages that are hard on you and, and what business... It... That's all a reflection on him. Healthy Christians make him look good. Unhealthy Christians make him look bad. Life is not about you. It's about him. You're right. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. We're going to have a verse of invitation. Maybe you're here this morning. I mentioned it earlier in the message. You're not saved. And by saved, I mean you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may know who God is. You may know who Jesus is. But you cannot honestly say, I have a real relationship with Him. He knows me. If that's you this morning and you're not 100% sure that you are saved, would you slip your hand up? All I want to do is pray for you. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to send anybody to you. I just want to pray for you. You say, I'm not sure I have that relationship. God bless you. I see those hands. You put them down. Anybody else? Just be honest. I, I, don't, I know who He is, but I'm not sure He knows me. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? I just want to pray for you. Christians, are you healthy or unhealthy? Listen, there's a lot of stuff in there. I tried not to spend a whole lot of time, but that covered every area of my life and your life. To be unhealthy in one area is still unhealthy. Are you completely healthy this morning? Are you well? Are you uncorrupt as a Christian? I'm going to pray. Folks are going to stand to their feet. Some are already here at the altars. If you'd like to come do business with God, you can come. Heavenly Father, I pray that you help us this morning in this invitation time. God, help us not to be in a hurry. But Lord, help us to see. God, would you do surgery on us this morning? Are we healthy or unhealthy? Because ultimately we're a reflection of you. And God, I don't want to make you look bad. I pray for those two that raised their hand for salvation. Not sure. God, would you please help them? Would you help them to have the courage to step out, come down here to the altar, and let us take a Bible and show them how they can have that relationship with you? Lord, I pray that you help folks to make decisions in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet if you're still in your seat, please. Everyone standing. If you'd like to come down here and do business with God, the altars are open. Some are here. There's no room at the altar. You can kneel at the front row.
don't you make a move for God today? Honestly, I'm not sure everybody in the room is 100% healthy. If, there, if you're unhealthy in any, in any area of your life, why don't you get it right with God today? It's not about you and me. It's not about you and other people. It's about you and God. I'll be right with everybody else if I'm right with Him. If you got relationship problems, you need to check that relationship. Why do you think Jesus said the two greatest commandments are love the Lord thy God and then love thy neighbor as thyself? And He said on these hang all the law. Everything in life is based on your relationship with God first, then your love for each other. You go back and study those things out that we just talked about. It's all about your relationship with Him and your relationship with everybody else. Are you healthy today? 